Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new. And if you are new, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about stuff I quit buying. I've got a whole list here on my phone. And maybe some of these items you guys will consider not buying anymore as well. The reason I'm doing this whole video is because for 2019, I'm planning to do a low buy where I really cut back on my main focus this year is going to be fast food items and uh, really focusing on eating more at home and what we have at home like our leftovers and such that's that's really my main area of focus for this year um, however I've really been cutting back on things that I, pr I buy for like the last year really like I've really been cutting out like impulse purchases for like clothes and makeup and frivolous things um, and in doing so I've also found you know things that I just I don't have to have in my life anymore it's just so ingrained that you go buy these items that you know they're, they're considered household staples and a need but once you get rid of them or find alternatives to them that don't need constant replacement uh, suddenly you're, you're freeing up money in your budget um, and you know in some areas it's like a little bit here and there I guess it depends on the brand that you buy, but it all adds up in the end. And though I'm doing the 2019 low buy this year, um, as I mentioned, I, me and my husband, I can't say it's all been me, but my husband and I, um, in 2017, we ran into some financial problems. Um, we really had to cut back in like all aspects, like anything that we could cut back on, we did. And that's kind of where we started like really, really scrutinizing everything that we purchased and looking into seeing like, is there a way that we can get around purchasing said item? And so these are kind of the items that we found that we don't have to have. Like we were so used to buying them and using them, but turns out we don't really need them the way that we thought that we did. There's other ways to fulfill the purpose of said item um, without constantly buying the item. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, first one here, tissues, like the kind that you blow your nose on. Don't need them. Don't buy them. Um, I've got a box of them sitting on my shelf. A few of these items I do happen to have, <laughs> oddly enough, um, but I didn't buy them myself. <laughs> So the tissues were an inheritance when my grandmother went to the nursing home. She had a stockpile of tissues. Um, however, I have not bought tissues. I, I, I'm 28. I've lived on my own since I was almost 23. And I can't remember once in the last six years buying tissues. I, I just don't see the point to it because you throw them away. That is money you are throwing in the trash. Uh, you know, and I, I can understand that some of them, like the Puff Plus with aloe, you know, I can get where that would probably be nice if you have an extremely runny nose and it probably like, makes your nose feel better. However, I've just always been in the habit of using a handkerchief. It's something you can use several times when you're sick, like throughout the night you can use the same handkerchief typically. You know, more than once folded over, it's disgusting. We don't really need to get into ins and outs of how to use a handkerchief. Though I guess if you don't know how to use a handkerchief, let me know and I can make a video on it. <laughs> but a handkerchief is typically a one-time purchase. And then you throw it in the wash, you put it back in your drawer, it's good to go. The handkerchiefs I have, I've had since I was like a kid. Like, they last a lifetime if you take good care of them. Um, yeah, like I... <laughs> I don't even remember the last time I bought a new handkerchief. I've, I've just had it for years. And so tissues are just something that we don't purchase at all. Like I said, I've got a box of them sitting here, but I've been in my house that was my grandmother's for three years, and that's the same box that's been sitting out since before she went to the nursing home. So like, I didn't even open that box of tissues. It, that tells you how much we're using them. And you know, when you think about that, like tissues, like a box of tissue, what is that like? Two to three bucks depending on the brand you buy maybe up to five dollars depending on the brand that you buy um and so by cutting that out of our monthly budget like you know let's save us five bucks again like this isn't going to get you rich but you'll notice a difference when you start cutting back on certain things because you're like oh suddenly i've got like an extra five bucks you know that was going on tissues and now it's not you know 
Next one would be paper towels, kind of like the same thing. Um, though the paper towels were something we evaluated in 2017 when we had our financial troubles and we decided we could cut paper towels out because turns out a dish rag does the same thing as a paper towel. Exact same thing, you throw it in the wash, it's good to go. However, the part that would probably disgust some people, other people won't care, some people will be disgusted by it, is that I will use a dish towel to clean up any accidents my dog has when it comes to her peeing. <laughs> Um, I'll soak it up with a dish towel. Typically I grab a white one and then I throw it into the wash and bleach it um, just because that's a disinfectant and I feel like that's more sanitary. <laughs> Again, some people are going to be completely disgusted by that. However, it's worked for us. I'm not that bothered by it. I can remember my aunt doing that when I was a kid and her dog would have accidents and she'd mop it up with like a, a dish towel and throw it in the wash. Um, that's what we've been doing. It works for us. We're fine. Nobody's died. Nobody's gotten sick. Um, when it comes to poop accidents, I pick that up with toilet paper and flush it down the drain. Uh, if you guys want to get crazy, I guess crazy, I don't know, um, you could get rid of toilet paper by doing a family cloth, which I, that's a little, that's a bit out of my comfort zone personally. A family cloth is cloths that you use to clean yourself after using the bathroom. And then you wash them, and they're all communal, and that just, mm, no thank you. Um, the one that I am most interested in and considering is getting a bidet. That is something my husband and I have talked about, is getting a bidet to go on our toilet. We have not made that purchase yet. It's a couple hundred dollars. It's something we're beating around the idea of. Um, I'm not against it. I think he's a little hesitant. Um, but we'll see. We might end up getting one eventually. Um, but that is another option that can be cut out if you want to make the investment of getting a bidet. You know, this is another one of those things that you can say the same thing with cloth diapers. I hear, at least a couple of years ago when I looked into it, it's like almost $500 to get yourself a stockpile of cloth diapers, um, but they're reusable and in the long run saves you money. I've never personally made the investment in cloth diapers. I feel like that's way out of budget for us. It just works out better for us to buy the parent choice Walmart diapers as we go than it is to make like a lump sum $500 purchase on cloth diapers. Um, although I think if you can go that route, I think that's awesome. Anyways, back to things that I've personally quit buying versus things that I could quit buying. Um, pet toys. Now this one's kind of got a little bit of an exception to it. Uh, however, so my dog, she's not as bad as she was when she was a puppy, but like when she was younger, she had like buzz saws for teeth like she just chewed all the time and anytime I would get her a new toy it would last her anywhere from 24 to 48 hours normally some things would last longer like we might get a week out of a rope but and I I got she's a tiny dog like before I had my son she was like around seven pounds he's kind of beefed her up a little bit with all the tidbits he drops on the floor she's about 10 now but I even at a few points bought her like these big indestructible ropes that are for like a Labrador retriever and they're like massive and she's like this tiny little she's a Pomeranian she's just a mix but she looks more Pomeranian to her build tiny little dog I think the longest we got out of one of those ropes was like two or three weeks and it was like a $10 rope and it was for like a big dog like a big breed dog and she destroyed that thing in a couple of weeks like she just chewed all the time when she was younger and she's gotten better but at one point we were spending minimum of ten dollars a month on dog toys just to keep her entertained because she was going through them so quickly and one day i finally had the idea of why don't i just make them myself and i've actually got a whole video on this so i will link it down below shameless self-promotion um but i have thick thighs average about six month worth of wear on my leggings and after that, they start getting holes in them. You can mend your leggings. I've done it before. Typically, I get like one, maybe two more wears out of them and then the holes open back up. So I was like, it's not really worth it, the time and energy I put into fixing the holes in my thighs and my leggings. It's not really worth it. I'm not really getting much more use out of them. But what I started doing was turning them into dog toys. And again, link will be below for the video. But 
that was like a $10 a month expense that we went from spending every month on dog toys to now we don't have to spend it. And I can get for her, I can get, oh, probably anywhere from four to six toys out of a pair of leggings. And surprisingly, they've held up better for her than like the regular stringy ropes. And I think it's just because it's like a thicker material that's being used instead of strings. It's like, you know, thicker pieces of cloth. But that's worked well for her. And that's been an alternative use for my leggings. It's cut out the expense of dog toys for us for the most part. Like I said, there is an exception. And that's Christmas time. We get our stocking at Christmas and there are like actual dog toys in it. Um, surprisingly, she got a stuffed pig this year and it is still alive. She has not ripped the stuffing out yet. So that's shocking. However, she's almost four now. So maybe she's calming down a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, like I, I've got such a stockpile of dog toys I've made. I really considered taking a bunch of them up to the Humane Society. I don't know if they want them or not. I don't see why they wouldn't. But I, I've thought about donating a bunch of them because anytime I get, and not even just me, but like also my husband, when he gets holes in his shirts or I get holes in my shirts or holes in my pants, um, holes in his boxers, I turn them into dog toys. And I've got a, like a whole stockpile of dog toys. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like it, that's probably like one of the best things I ever started doing is making my own my own dog toys that's that saved us quite a bit of money okay next thing on my list that i have stopped buying and that is makeup remover wipes i don't see a point to them i mean i've had them before i like them they are definitely a convenience item however you go through them pretty quickly or at least i do and they're like really like five bucks it's been a while since i bought them like what five bucks for a pack of wipes three bucks three to five dollars um maybe more depending on what brand you're buying I used to get the Equate ones and that was almost in a monthly expense for me if not like every other month and I, I cut it out I got I don't need them I found micellar water I think it works really well for makeup removing and I'll just apply that to a washcloth to do my face throw the washcloth into the laundry that gets washed we're good to go <laughs> I mean I have to replace my micellar water but I get like the big things of it from Garnier and that lasts me like almost three months four months it lasts me quite a while and so you know like I'm, I'm saving myself the money I think that micellar water is like about six bucks but when you are spending nearly five bucks on like an almost monthly if not bi-monthly basis it, but you can go six months you know three to five to six months with just the micellar water I think it equals out and I suppose even there, you could argue the environmental factor because, you know, the micellar water, yes, it comes in plastic, but it can be recycled. And it's one bottle versus like a whole pack of wipes that can't be recycled in like the alumini, aluminum y, plastic y packaging that can't really be recycled either. That's kind of a bit of a stretch. But yeah, I've cut out buying that. I don't, I don't need them. They're just, they don't serve a purpose in my life. I got rid of them and I've been okay with it. Okay, the next thing that I cut out buying is gift wrap and gift bags. And that's not to say that I don't use gift wrap and gift bags. However, mostly when this comes to gift bags and tissue paper, but I store it. Like when other people gift me things, um, you know, the, the bags are nice and I get my gift or my husband gets his gift or like what have you my son gets his gift and then we keep the bags we store them I mean if you have place for it I understand if you're in an environment or at home where you aren't able to store your gift bags totally get it but if you can I would recommend it because if you stop and think about how much money you're spending every year on gift bags it's probably a pretty penny you can get them at the Dollar Tree for a dollar but how often are you picking them up at Walmart? Or, like, I can't tell you how many times people give me the ones that are like Hallmark gift bags. And I'm like, dang, you spent five bucks on a gift bag? <laughs> what? Thank you. But, like, what? <laughs> so, just take that in cons into consideration. When somebody gives you a gift, keep the gift bag. Keep the tissue paper. And then the next time you have to give a gift, you've already got the wrapping on hand. Um, as for the wrapping paper itself, we have a pretty decent stockpile. Now, once we use up what we have... I'll definitely repurchase. I do like having gift wrap on hand. I think it makes a gift look really, really nice. And it's something that I enjoy doing. I think it's part of the giving process, at least for me. Um, my mother-in-law, on the other hand, uses, um, she uses newspaper a lot. 
for gift wrap. So that's an option. That's definitely not an alternative. Um, would be using newspaper for gift wrap. It definitely works. Um, but like I said, I've got such a stockpile. I don't buy it because I've got so much of it. But when it comes to gift bags, which I use quite a bit, um, from Christmas, from birthdays, I I store them. I store them, and eventually, I end up using them. <laughs> okay, so another thing that I don't buy or make a monthly payment on are phone games or phone apps. And this is for me personally. I just don't see a lot of value in spending money on an app in my phone. It's not a tangible item for me. I don't see the point. I don't see the point in, in, in doing that. Um, yeah, I, I don't spend money on games, in games. I say on games. I, I like to play Sims and I do buy more sim expansion packs. That's something I really enjoy doing. But like, for example, Candy Crush, you get to a point where you have to like spend money to move up. I mean, I guess if that's something that you just truly love, truly brings value to your life, and it's like a true pastime, maybe it's worth it to you. But personally, spending money to advance in games isn't worth it to me at all. It might say 99 cents, but how quickly does that 99 cents turn into $5, turn into $10? How quickly does that rack up? And is it really worth it to you at the end of the month to have spent that much money on a phone game? If you're somebody who likes to spend the money to advance in games, I really challenge you to take a month and just really keep track of how much you're spending in a phone game and then decide, was it worth the purchase? Because I feel like that's something that gets you with the whole, it's only 99 cents, but that quickly adds up and turns into more than 99 cents. Okay, here's something else I've quit buying. Plants. I love the idea of having plants and having greenery. However, I do not have a green thumb. And I have learned to accept that. Uh, now, I have, with exception, my aquarium that has java moss. But java moss just kind of does its own thing. I would like to try my hand at planting some more aquarium plants. Um, so I might end up doing that this year, but when it comes to like house plants, other than the one succulent I have, I've given up. I'm like, nope. Um, however, my one succulent has done well, and so I kind of want to get another succulent, um, to go in the windowsill. I feel like it would look nice having two in the windowsill. So we'll see. I might buy a second one this spring when, you know, all the plants and stuff come out. But when it comes to like the plants that go outside on your porch flowers, those things. I love the idea of them. I can't keep them alive for nothing. So I'm done buying plants. Okay, here's the next one. And I think that if you are a younger woman, it's definitely something to consider. And that's to stop dyeing your hair. I quit dyeing my hair personally. Um, and I, I came to this conclusion, not so much out of the money factor, though it was definitely, you know, it's, it's, it's been nice not spending the money on hair dye. Um, I came to this conclusion because I feel like eventually, like I'm, I'm nearing my 30s, I will be 29 this year, and eventually I will start getting gray hair, okay, like I've already gotten like two that came in, I noticed them, I don't know, like back in November, I plucked them out, it was a whole thing, um, <laughs> but it's coming, like it is coming, eventually I will have gray hair. And I, or I'll start getting more gray hairs, they'll be noticeable. And so I will want to dye my hair more often. And so I decided, you know, I need to quit dyeing my hair because I used to dye my hair um, like this reddish color all the time. And I did that a lot in my early 20s. Um, and I finally decided, you know, I should just enjoy my natural hair color while I can because by the time I hit my 30s, between 30 and 35, I'm gonna guess. That I'm going to start having to dye my hair on a regular basis to cover the grays. That or just accept the grays. I mean that's really the two options. You can cover them or you can accept them. And so I decided that for the rest of my 20s that I'm just going to enjoy my natural hair color for as long as I can. I've got the whole rest of my life to dye my hair and there's no sense like you know I, I would hate to be in like my 50s and be like man I miss my natural hair color. I wish I could have that back. You know like I want to enjoy it while I can. So, I, I haven't dyed my hair in years. I don't even know. I'd say 
three to four years since I last colored my hair. And it, you know, it's, it feels great not having that expense. <laughs> and coloring your hair professionally, which is what I had done, um, is expensive. Um, I've never personally been one to use box, box dyes because I've never had a talent for it. I, I did it one time, had horrible results, and never did it again. Um, I've always had it done professionally. And, you know, it's, it's, it feels good not having that expense. Like I said, it feels good. And it's been nice just enjoying my natural hair color. There's nothing wrong with it. I like my natural hair color just fine. And, you know, within the next five years, I'm assuming I'll want to start dyeing my hair on a regular basis to cover the grays. So, now that's one expense I was able to cut out. Okay, so the next item that I have cut out spending money on is possibly controversial or definitely something not everybody is going to be able to or want to cut out. But what I will be cutting out, or have I guess already, is birth control and condoms. We're done. Um, we're on our second pregnancy. Assuming everything goes well with the birth, I will be having my tubes tied and we will be done buying preventative contraception. Uh, now that is not for me to sit here and say that everybody should go out and get their tubes tied or have a vasectomy or quit using birth control. Like that's not what I'm saying. Like if you want to have a family someday or if you, you know, for what, don't give up your birth control just to save money, okay? Like don't do it. Um, but if you're at the place where you're done having children, it might be something to consider, talk about, think about, look into. Um, we at one point I talked about my husband having a vasectomy and this was with my first pregnancy because I hated being pregnant so much. I was like one kid and I'm done. And I, you know, we talked about him getting fixed. However, I ended up in a C-section and we just put all that on the back burner. We were like, you know, we'll, we'll wait on it. We'll wait on it. We'll see. And turns out I love being a mom. I don't like being pregnant. Oh, it's not my thing, but I love being a mom. And so it's worth being pregnant to have another kid. But we don't want any more than two. That is like our limit, um, at least as far as biologicals go, if we ever decide in the future we want more children, we will look into adoption or foster. That's a whole other subject. <laughs> but since I'll be having a second C-section, um, that just comes down to city ordinances. And other, there, that's a whole other thing. Why I'm having a repeat C-section. Whole other thing. The point of the story here is that I'm having a, another C-section for this baby. And I have decided to have my tubes tied. It just makes sense. I'm already going to be open anyways. Might as well sh tie off, you know? Um, but that is one expense that we won't be having anymore. However, I will say that if you have a Meyer in your area and you have a prescription for birth control, get it filled at Meyer, and your prescription will be free. They do not charge you for prenatals or birth control, which is awesome. Um, but it'll, it'll be nice now to to worry about that stuff anymore. And before I used to go to Meyer and I went to CVS, I think I was paying like 12 plus dollars every month on birth control. So, I mean, I haven't had that expense in a long time personally because of using the Meyer pharmacy, but I can definitely see where if you have a copay and you're using a pharmacy where it's not free, um, that racks up. Personal experience, I know, it racks up. Okay, so there's one last item here on my list and that is convenient produce. Now I understand that for some people convenient produce as in things that are already pre-chopped are like a need. I, I, there are some people out there who have like physical conditions and having things that are already pre-cut for them is like a lifesaver. However for me getting pre-cut produce or convenient produce is just me being lazy. Like it really doesn't take me that much time to chop my own head of lettuce, cut up my own apple slice, do those kind of things. And typically, convenient produce is priced higher than the items that you can buy whole and do it yourself. However, I do buy baby carrots, but they're so dang cheap, like 89 cents, if that. I buy the baby carrots. Um, <laughs> they're great for snacking. And anyway, yeah, I chop my own heads of lettuce. I get my romaine. I get my, my um, iceberg, and I mix them all together in a bag, and... I will get two or three bags, like gallon-sized bags of lettuce for the same price that 
it would take for me to get like one bag from the store. Does that make sense? Like one one shop bag. Like I think you're spending like four to five dollars for like a pre-cut bag of lettuce, whereas you can get a head of um, iceberg for like forty nine cents, and then you can get like three to four heads of romaine for about three bucks. So you have like four dollars right there, and once you chop all that, you'll get about two plus really full gallon size bags um, of storage bags of lettuce. So it's, it's kind of like why it's not economical <laughs> in my opinion. Um, and it's not cost effective. So same thing with like those apple slices that are soaked in lemon juice, the pre pre cut ones. If that's something that you really really need is pre cut apples, it's probably gonna be cheaper for you to just buy a bag of apples, cut them yourself, and soak them in lemon juice. And they will preserve your apples and you can keep them in a storage container if that's something that you need to have on hand. Personally, I don't need that many pre-cut apples as much as I do enjoy having them. I have myself an apple slicer, and so I need my apples cut. I just slice it, stick it in a bowl, eat it, problem solved. Um, same goes with like, I don't know, watermelon is you can get pre-cut. You, you know, you can get all these different things pre-cut and pre-sliced. Strawberries, pre-washed and sliced. And, like, I, I just personally don't need all of that. I guess it's supposed to be, you know, it's convenient and it's a time saver. But Monday through Friday, I am a stay-at-home mom. I am a homemaker. And I'm not that pressed for time. You want to know what I do most of the day? To be honest, I sit on my ass watching TV. That takes up a big chunk of my time. And so that means that I definitely have the time to wash and prep and cut my own produce. I really don't need to be buying the convenience items. They're more expensive. It's just not, it's just not a priority for me. It's not something that I need in my life. Okay, so here at the end, I'm just going to leave you guys off with a few things that I've started doing low buys on here the past couple of years. Um, first one here would be like Bath and Body Works stuff. Bath and Body Works is just like a complete guilty pleasure for me. I love going in there and buying. It's really been a work in progress for me to be able to just go in and window shop. Um, sometimes I still end up buying at least one item, but I've gotten better in the sense that I don't go in and splurge and spend like 50 bucks at Bath and Body Works at one pop. Easy to do. Uh, for a while there, I just avoided Bath & Body Works at all times. I'd be going to the mall, have to pass the store, and they put my blinders on. Don't even look, walk right past it, I don't need it. Because I've got so much of it at home, I've got such a stockpile. And I really tried to focus on buying as I need. However, and my workaround to this is, I will ask for it for Christmas and birthday gifts. So I still get it throughout the year, it's just that I'm not the one buying it. Unless it's like a perfume that I super duper love. For example, the Pearberry. I had to stop myself from buying myself another bottle of it last year because I love, love, love Pearberry. However, I had like half a bottle left last year. I was like, no, not buying a new one this year because I still have half a bottle at home. Um, but I, I've done that. And like, I think the gingerbread latte, um, I bought a new one this past year because I used up my old one last year and I really like it. So, you know, it's, it's one thing to replace scents that are your absolute favorites and you love, but it's another to just go in and have like a giant spending splurge, unless it's something that you plan for. But again, it needs to be something, if you're going to have like a giant spending splurge, it should be something you're treating yourself with, you know, every three to four to five months, not something you're doing like two or three to four times in a month. Um, so I feel like that's kind of like a little bit of a difference. But again, I have so much Bath & Body Works, I don't need more body sprays, I need to use what I have. And so I really, 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 the past couple of years, cut back on how much I spend and buy there. And our workaround is asking for it for Christmas and birthdays. <laughs> Another one here is like, I guess what you'd call name brand shampoos. I've never been one to buy my shampoos and conditioners from like Ulta or Sephora. But um, growing up, I used a lot of herbal essences. I used a lot of Pantene. I love that stuff. However... <laughs> They're kind of pricey, and you think about it, you know, oh, four bucks here, four bucks there for shampoos and conditioners, but like it adds up. Like, if you're buying a shampoo and a conditioner from Herbal Essences, you're probably spending about ten bucks for two items. Um, same thing goes for Pantene, possibly spending more. Again, it's been a few years since I've bought either, and I've personally found that the brand VO5 
um, works really well. I love it. It makes my hair smell good. It's a lasting scent that is for a couple of days, typically. Um, currently I'm using Kiwi, in case you're wondering. They've got a variety of scents. You can get them at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. They typically have a larger variety at the Dollar Tree. However, Walmart also carries them, and they're about 89 cents there. Maybe it's 98. I'm dyslexic. I flip numbers. But it's a little cheaper at Walmart, but they have less of a selection. And I would really recommend, like, looking at these cheaper brand shampoos and conditioners. And I know people will argue the quality and stuff like that. I get it. But however, like, I've personally never had a problem with it. I think my hair is very, very soft from the conditioner. My hair smells good from the shampoo. I feel clean. And I don't have any problems from it. Um, you know, you can want to argue quality of shampoo and conditioner. However, the Aussie brand shampoo and conditioner, which is also very expensive, um, makes my hair fall out every time I use it. I have globs of hair just falls out. I can't do Aussie. So, I, you know, in, in life, price doesn't always mean quality. Just because you're spending the higher price doesn't mean it's going to last like it ought to. For example, Victoria's Secret bras, girl. <laughs> For the amount of money people are spending on your bras, they should be able to go through the washing machine like the ones from Walmart. Just saying. I've had Walmart bras hold up for like two and three years, and with Victoria's Secret bras, I'm lucky to get a year out of them. So, that's another thing I quit buying. <laughs> Expensive bras. <laughs> and two other things that I've really, really cut back on buying, and I, I try to just like buy as I need and replace as I go, and that's makeup and clothing, you know? like. I average about a six month wear on my leggings, um, I have thick thighs, and I get chub rub. And so every, every six months I tend to have to replace at least one pair of leggings, and that's just kind of like my life if I want to wear leggings. Jeans I might get a year out of if I'm lucky. <laughs> so that is something I have to replace, however I've really gotten in the habit of buying as I need versus just buying to buy. Um, and I've really found that really helps me get the full use. And the money's worth out of what I have. And same with clothes, with makeup. Like, I I really don't need any more makeup. I do get IFC every month, but that's just, like, a tiny little something that I truly enjoy. I, I cut it out for, like, over a year, maybe a year and a half, didn't get it. And I finally reevaluated, and I was like, you know what? I can afford the $10 a month expense for IFC. It brings me that much joy. I'll allow it. <laughs> so, that is everything that I've cut out and quit buying and the workarounds I have found for these items. I hope you guys have found this interesting and maybe a little educational. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything on this list that you think you're going to try giving up and letting go of. And let me know if there's anything that you guys have quit buying and found workarounds on. Um, yeah, so let us know in the comments below. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in my next one.